Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. The United Nations Security Council has released a report about the situation in Haiti just before Kenya sends a thousand policemen to try and restore peace and tranquility. And the report is really disturbing and it is one that should worry William Ruto. A UN special envoy in that area, Madam Maria Isabel Salvador, is saying that over the past few weeks, gangs have taken over key infrastructure in Haiti and they are meeting violence. And they are doing this, they are meeting violence on innocent citizens and they are doing this in anticipation of deployment of uh, multilateral security agencies. This is what uh, the UN report says, that uh, killings, sexual violence and other abuses continue to be committed by gangs in Haiti. Chief Envoy there, Maria Isabel Salvador, told the Security Council on Monday. And Salvador is recommending that the only way to restore peace in Haiti is to engage all the stakeholders so that they can hold a credible election. And in that report, this is uh, Mariah saying that UN envoy upholds critical role of elections amid rising gang violence. That is the report that she gave the, the, the United Nations Security Council. As we ponder about the situation in Haiti and as we get that report here in Kenya a few kilometers from Nairobi in Kapinda Sam area in Baringo this was happening <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the two reports are really disturbing one it's like we are taking our soldiers to a butcher house in Haiti. And the other one is a very disturbing scene where bandits raided a police, a GSU camp. And they took hostage that area for over seven hours with the sounds of, of, of bullets. And I looked at the situation in the school. I'm a parent, and so you are. And I was looking at those pupils lying down. And outside the classrooms, sounds of bullets are raging in the air. I mean, this is really disturbing. It can even traumatize such, such children. And the, the, the report that was given out there is that they laid down there for over five hours, and they, are, they were reporting, you know, very, very sadly that they could not even go for calls. They couldn't go to the toilets and latrines. They had not even eaten. And this is happening at a time when people are about to begin exams. Even back at home, the parents had to lock themselves in the houses. Experts are asking, where was the intelligence? Because we were told that William Ruto deployed a multilateral agency, security agency, and we have the soldiers there, the Kenya police, the GSU, and they were to work together to try and combat this, the, 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 the threats from bandits. And the report is also indicating that when they called for enforcement, it took too long for the other partners to come and help them. Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I want us to look at mistakes that William Ruto is doing as far as security is concerned. Because many a times when we highlight this, some of the Kenya Kwanzaa adherents feel that we are being unfair to the government. Really, how can you call it being unfair when children are lying down against the raging sounds of bullets in the air 
Before we delve into this, if you are watching our channel for the first time, allow me to request you to click that subscribe button and click the notification bell to allow YouTube to notify you whenever we do a video like this. You can also like and share our videos. And to all our esteemed supporters, I'm really humbled by your unwaver unwavering support. May God bless you as you continue lifting our channel together. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why William Ruto is being blamed squarely on this is because we really cannot afford to take our policemen to Haiti without listening to all the warnings from experts. Because this is not the first time that soldiers are being taken to Haiti. It has happened before and they have always left behind devastating result instead of restoring peace. And the, the, the bandits in Haiti are really waiting for our policemen. They are ready and they are warning that they will not hold any peace. They will fight till the last drop of their blood. And we've discussed this over and over again, that Haiti is very far away from us. And yet we, we, we cannot take our soldiers, yet the situation in the country is dire. Between restoring peace to our children who are about to, to, to sit for their exam, national exam, and people who are in Haiti, and we have other Caribbean nations there, which one is on priority? You know that your guess is as good as mine. We need to take care of ourselves first, first and then others second. I've, I've always complained about this government, that they will always prioritize external demands, especially when it comes from the West then we become secondary in their list. Number two, if it was an Azimio demonstration, you would have seen all the policemen being unleashed on them. And I'm wondering why we cannot unleash all these policemen to the bandits. This is a major operation that should be dealt with, 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 dealt with within a week. The passion with which the policemen were killing people during demonstrations, including getting into ambulances and shooting hemlessly to people who were demonstrating. I remember this police officer who shot at journalist's car, who shot at Raila Odinga's car. Where are they now with all the passion? Why can't they go there and, and, and unleash the terror on, on, on bandits? This is the reason why people feel William Ruto has got... His priorities wrong. Number three, William Ruto criticized the manner in which Uhuru Kenyatta was dealing with the, the banditry. And he said he was being sabotaged because these were his people and therefore the government of the day did not care because he claimed he had been pushed to the periphery. Now he's in charge, he's the commander-in-chief of all the armed forces, he commands the police and the soldiers, yet this is happening under his own watch. He really complained, and he said he had a plan that when he gets to power, this will be a thing of the past. Now look at what is happening. We continue losing lives. In fact, the Carpentersam school was closed in 2019. Because I remember it was reported that at about lunch hour when pupils had, 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 had broken and they were going back to, for lunch, bandits, the, the, the bandits fired bullets at them. And the security situation could not allow school to go on there. The headmaster there was saying that he's got about 227 students, I mean candidates, who are supposed to sit for exams. How do you sit for an exam? Because sitting for an exam requires a very tranquil environment, a pacifying environment, requires a settled mind. Do you go for an exam when bullets are raging everywhere and you don't know at what point it will, you know, escalate again? It just, it happens without any notice. And to make it even worse, it was being reported that there were over 200 bandits, 200 ladies and gentlemen, coordinated and they decided to attack not any other place, the GSU camp. You can imagine these daredevil, you know, bandits who went there. And then the last one, William Ruto has continued to ignore advice from experts. 
I remember George Natembea, who is the, the, the Transoya governor, one day decided to go for a prayer rally that was being officiated by William Ruto in, in Baringo. And he told William Ruto, be careful about those who are hosting you here. They are giving you a red carpet. Yet at, at your back, people are being killed. And he told William Ruto, please, don't detach yourself from citizens. Our, our Mahaslas will promise you will work with them. Don't rely on the report that you're being given by these people because they are part and parcel of the insecurity in the area. Natambea told him as an expert, because Natambea was in Rift Valley, at first he was in Central when they were fighting Mungiki. Then he was in Rift Valley when they were fighting the, the, the same, same, you know, bandits. And he told the president that sometimes when you go for such operations, they will be given coordinates and you are targeting places where you think the bandits are, then when you are given north, bullets are, 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 are you know, being shot in the south. When you are given coordinates in the east, in the west, something is happening. But Ruto has continued to ignore all this. Instead, we play politics without security. I don't know whether the Kenya Kwanzaa adherents will still have the audacity to believe that we are against the government. This cannot be solved by blaming Uru Kenyatta. No. This can only be solved if people sit down and engage in a very coordinated affair. I don't know what you think, but I'm really sad.